Okay, guys, what's up? It's your favorite last man. The last man who needs a shave and a haircut. No, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, today I wanted to talk about, um, you know, a philosopher who in the popular imagination is sort of misunderstood but widely known. Actually, interestingly, not in his day, though. Um, and that's Friedrich Nietzsche, yeah. Um, and specifically, I want to talk about what he has to say, either not necessarily directly, but definitely indirectly, um, about disability. Um, now, before I... I, um, continue, I want to know that I'm fully aware of Nietzsche's shortcomings, um, especially in the ways in which his philosophy has been used to justify some pretty heinous things, um, you know, with no-no Germans and all of that, and even our sort of very modern, or I guess sorry, contemporary slash postmodern world where one of the predominating features of the current zeitgeist is this sort of, like, very one-dimensional hedonism and moral relativism, which it's not really what Nietzsche advocated for at all. Like, he, um, that's a very, very common misconception of his work. And, uh, his views on women also were not, I mean, they, they, um, were even, at least in my opinion, a little less than most people in his position at the time. Like, um, there's this famous, and anyone who has read Thus Spoke Zarathustra knows, there's this famous line in Thus Spoke Zarathustra where he says, if you go to women, don't forget to bring the whip. <laughs> and, you know, I just want to say I don't condone stuff like that at all. And I would say in response, just to make it equal, if you go to man, don't forget to bring the collar. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, but anyway, um, Nietzsche, I think, has a lot to say about disability in the collection of his journals, um, called The Will to Power, um, and... You know, I was trying to look for my copy. I know I have my copy, but I can't find it right now. Um, cause my <laughs> I have so many books, my my uh dudes. Um, and and so yeah, but I just wanted to say that if you're looking for a copy of the Will to Power, yes, there are a ton of um public domain, excuse me, versions, but the problem with those editions is that they were edited by um, Nietzsche's sister, who edited it very misleadingly and to fit her own no-no German agenda. In fact, his sister, even though he was not, and he despised any sort of nationalism, um, his sister was a proto-no-no German, 
and then an actual no-no German who um met with the mustache man many times before uh she you know kicked the bucket um so make sure I know it's tempting to go out and and you know, for free, get a public domain version, but please, please, please make sure that you, um, are able to, to shell out a little bit more money for a version published after 1966, um, because... That's when an actually well edited and completely unabridged version of his journals or of the will to power was published by this guy named Walter Kaufman, uh, who um sort of did a did a whole bunch to rehabilitate his reputation after um, 1945, um, and most, most modern versions that you will find are actually based on his, you know, numbering of, of the aphorisms and stuff like that. I think the, the newest edition actually is from Penguin, um, from 2021 i believe and it uses his uh numbering and his addition as a base um but yeah in the will to power nietzsche on the subject of disability and ability even though he never really talks about it all too much um i do think that if you consider that his entire philosophy is about self overcoming and not letting the circumstances of your existence define you so much or prevent you from from at least trying to achieve things and stuff like that in that sense, Nietzsche is so ahead of his time, and he's ahead of his time in another way, in that, you know, in The Will to Power, he has a whole bunch of entries that talk very honestly about the way in which society treats exceptions. Um, and while I think he... He gears towards or is more geared towards that meaning that moral exceptions those that don't accept the prevailing values of the age I think that's more what he means but he also talks about like how and you know, this is a little bit going into stereotypes about disabled people, but he does kind of say, like, that, you know, hardship, um, and that's another thing that's, that's actually in the book, too, his, probably his most famous, um, quote, what does not unalive me makes me stronger. And so, yeah, and, you know, for considering Nietzsche's cultural context, which would have been Prussia in the mid to late 1800s, and for him to say stuff like that, and for him to... He even questioned the prevailing social Darwinism of his age. He says, like, you know, Darwinists say, oh, well, 
It's the survival of the fittest or those that are most useful. And he says useful in relation to what exactly? Because it's so often that things that we would consider not useful in society, say a physical disability, can actually bring with it useful insight into the human experience and he has a whole bunch of aphorisms like that in in the will to power now here's the thing okay he does actually have some social darwinist type um aphorisms as well but the ones that critique that sort of Darwinism far, far outnumber the ones in support of it. You have to remember this is a journal, right? And, um, you know, none of us is completely consistent even within the day-to-day. We have thoughts that maybe... You know, we might write down, but ultimately we come to, you know, feel, oh, well, I don't really feel like that anymore. And it's true that a lot of these, like, aphorisms ended up comprising large parts of his future texts, but for the most part, in even in his published text, he's on the side of the physical exceptions against social Darwinism in Germany in the late, mid to late 1800s. That's so revolutionary. And, you know, his belief that people can overcome. Uh, You guys know that I'm not too much into the whole inspiration thing for disabled people. That... This channel has tried to consistently be a counter to that, but at the same time, I've also never wanted disabled people to not like themselves, to hate themselves. Um, and, you know, Nietzsche, I think, was one of our first allies in that respect. I know that's going to be controversial, but I really do. Because he knew that life was more than just the vain pleasure of the Anglo-American industrialists or the materialism of socialists and communists. And for that, And for him redefining what it means to go through bad things that and for him just transforming the way that people saw the usefulness of pain of of struggle i respect him i respect him so much because that's what our lives um are as disabled people if you're disabled you don't even have a choice as to whether you want that to be the case or not i mean of course um Everyone struggles in life. I'm not saying that's unique to us, but it's just different, right? When, because when you're disabled, you have the notions of what society wants you to be versus what you actually are and what you actually have to overcome. And so for someone of his place in time and age, to come out so strongly against uh, the prevailing notion of his 
his context against people like us, especially in Germany at that time. Like, I will never not have respect for him and all his characters, especially Zarathustra. Zarathustra is what every disabled person should aspire to become. I mean that. I, I feel like just because I, I talk about, you know, the more uncomfortable aspects of um, disabled existence on this channel in a sort of uncompromising way, it doesn't seem like I believe that. But I do. I'm not against trying. I'm against knowing your your limits and accepting things for sure. But I'm also not against trying. Give everything a shot. Um, if you don't want to be an inspiration, don't be. If you want to be, go ahead. You know what I mean? Don't let yourself be defined by able-bodied values and standards. Alright, see you guys, bye.